Yo, yo. Welcome, friends of the internet, to the second edition of Launching Long Shots here exclusively on the Roto Baller YouTube page. Um, make sure to use the promo code if you're not a member of Roto Baller yet. Lines, L I N E S, is the promo code that'll get you 10% off uh, your subscription, annual, weekly, whatever it is. If you book the annual, it's $6.75 a month. You will not get a better deal. I can promise you that um, for any DFS and betting golf site out there. Um, you have Spencer's DFS Wizards. You have all of Byron's numbers. You have Joe mm -hmm. Nicely's content exclusively here. And everything that I'm giving you, up to five pieces of exclusive content a week, make sure to go check that out. It's highly worth your time. Let's get into some long shots. And here's the thing. Uh, Century, Sahith the Gala. I did not do a video for it, but I was active tweeting it out and did sort of my long shot picks in the Rotoballer Discord for that event. Second place. Last week, Keegan Bradley was the headliner of this video, was the thumbnail. The guy had it, was minus 400 on the 18th tee on Sunday uh, and lost. But that's part of golf betting. That's part of long shots. But really kind of what I'm encouraged by honestly, is even though I didn't hit the winner, 150 to one Chris Kirk at the century. There were 500 to one tickets out there on Grayson Murray last week. Let's see what we can find for the Amex. And I've got a couple of guys here. Here are my three picks. The first one, uh, checking in at 66 to one, one point better than we got Keegan last week. And I like him for honestly, uh, very much a lot of the same reasons. We're going to take Akshay Batia. Here's the thing about Akshay. Um, He's great in a birdie fest, and he has a specific skill set that I think tailors great to this course. I'm going to bring up kind of his player page here, and you can see the run that he's been on, um, explicitly gaining strokes off the tee in a lot of consecutive events. I love that he played both Hawaii events, um, both top 14 finishes. He followed the century T14, and really he's in the final group at the century, if you think back to it, with a T13 at the Sony Open last week where he gained over five strokes on a pro. Approach. Love the fact that the iron play is, while a little bit erratic, he has that ability to seriously gain strokes on the field. Um, and really where he is fantastic is this range of like 100 to 150 yards pitching wedge range, right? All three courses this week pay under 70, 200 yards. You're going to have that club in your hand quite a bit. You're also going to have the long irons in your hand quite a bit. He's proficient there. And the last thing I want to note here is these when you're kind of trying to attack the board and find a long shot that has potential to win, you want to see these spikes. If you're following my mouse here in putting, um, obviously the Barracuda win that he got out there in California is not reflected here because we didn't have strokes gained data, but I'm certain that he gained a lot of strokes putting. Here's a big spike at the century plus 4.8. These are the type of numbers while you see a lot of losses in there, that spike in putting is what you look for, particularly on courses like this with tiny greens and the ability for him to hold putt and convert on birdies. Here's what I was really talking about. Like look at his 50 to 125 range, how he excels there. He's gaining 0.31 strokes per event per round. Um, and he's hitting 75% of greens in regulation. So really for him, it's going to come down to the putter. And if it is proficient this week, like it was at the century, I think that he has a good shot to win. Okay. Uh, the next guy on my list this week, I talked him up a ton on my podcast, Preferred Lines, which is out there now. Make sure to go subscribe to that YouTube channel as well. Preferred Lines is the channel. Um, my full podcast breakdown of the entire event with Christopher Powers from Golf Digest is up, is live now. Here's the second pick. We're dipping into the 100 to 1 range, and we're going straight to Eric Van Ruyen. Um, EVR has been on an absolute tear. There are deficiencies in Eric Van Ruyen's game. Let me pull it up here, and I'll show you some of them. Here are the deficiencies, right? Let me skip past his stats. This the ball speed is fantastic 54.7% of fairways and driving accuracy. That's not great. That brings water into play a ton in Palm Springs. That said, let's scroll back up and look at what he's been able to do off the tee one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine consecutive events gaining strokes off the tee. And this does not include any data from his win during the fall swing at the worldwide technology, which was also a birdie fest at 27 under par. 
Another guy that has played both events in Hawaii, and we've seen the majority of winners at the Amex have that in common. They've played at least one event. They've shaken a little rust. They've dusted off the clubs. They've got some tournament reps under their belt, and they are ready to go for the American Express tournament. The other thing that I wanted to note is here's where he is getting crushed, right, around the green game. He sucks. He's lost in nine of those 10 starts that we looked before. But you want to look back at his best around the green performance in the last calendar year. It's at the American Express. And I don't think that's a coincidence where he did end up finishing T6 last year. The reason being, statistically, by PGA Tour standards, it's one of the easiest courses on tour to get yourself up and down around the greens. If you can avoid the bunkers, which are a little bit tough, you will gain strokes around the green here, even if that isn't a strength. So essentially the biggest weakness in his game is somewhat mitigated this week based on the course setup. And he's able to really accentuate on his recent um, approach play and T to green prowess. Look what he did T to green here last year. There's the same amount of water on this course last year. 8.2 strokes T to green he gained. Um, he's on a fantastic run right now. Ultimately, what I think is the best of his career career and i think odds makers i think they just see the amount of water and volatility in the game of eric van ruyen and they just blanket priced him here when i think he belongs in that batia range at 66 to 1 i do believe that's the win equity that a guy like that holds who's gained six six three three strokes t to green he's gaining off he's gaining on approach he's gaining off the tee he's doing it everywhere except around the green this course mitigates that. Take Eric Van Rooy in 100 to 1. Um, I think it's a very fair bet. And the final guy, the final member of the launching long shot segment is at 200 to 1 this week. Um, that number is available on betonline.ag. And also, you can grab that at FanDuel. No surprise here. Talked about him a ton as well. I know that. Byron had some content very early in this week that threw together some numbers that make you very inclined to bet a guy like Sam Ryder, 201, especially at an event where 11 of the last 15 winners have come at long shot type odds above 60 to one, above 55 to one. We've seen huge numbers hit here in the past. Let's look at the stat profile for Sam Ryder, where it's quite good. Um, the only, the only concerning element to this for me is that he didn't play either an event in Hawaii. I would have loved to see him tee it up at the Sony. Um, he did not. That said, top 10 at the Worldwide Technology, top 13 at the RSM Classic, a couple of other good finishes in the fall. But let's really just look at this approach play run that he's been on since the 3M Open. Um, some huge gainer starts with his irons. And I think that that is going to be the most important tool in a player's skill set this week. If you're going to get to the prerequisite score of 22 to 28 under par, that's going to be required to win this. You're going to have a ton of wedges. And the thing when you have these short iron clubs and the expectation to make birdie is you have to hit it within 10 feet to do so. I think Sam Ryder's on a fantastic run. You look at the numbers. Um, if you compile them from the last 36 rounds played there are two players in the entire field who are gaining over one stroke per round on approach one of them is world number one and also in this field at six to one odds and that's scotty scheffler the other sam Ryder, 201 lock that in couple it with a little t20 t40 my name is joe idoni at tour picks on twitter is the place that you can find me i appreciate you checking out this segment make sure to catch up on all the articles and great content that we have this week over at roto baller i'll catch you guys next week for another segment of launching long shots 